heroes are an inspiring group of people. Every one of them, from the larger-than-life comic book heroes you see on the big silver screen to the everyday heroes that let us live the privileged lives we do. Every hero has a story to tell. The doctor saving lives at your local hospital. The war veteran down the street who risked his lives for our freedom. The police officers and firefighters who risk their safety to ensure ours. Every hero is special and every story worth telling. But there is one class of heroes that I think is often ignored. The entrepreneur. The creator. The producer. The ones who look at the problems in this world and think to themselves, you know what? I can fix that. I can help people. And I can make a difference. Then they go out and do exactly that by creating a new product or introducing a new service. Some go on to change the world. Others make a world of difference to their customers. Welcome to The Hero Show. Join us as we pull back the masks of the world's finest heropreneurs and learn the secrets to their powers, their success, and their influence. So you can use those secrets to attract more sales, make more money, and experience more freedom in your business. I'm your host, Richard Matthews, and we are on in three, two, one. Hello, and welcome back to the show. My name's uh, Richard Matthews, obviously, and I'm here with Johnny Cooper. Johnny, are you there? I am indeed. How wonderful. You're, you're in awesome. an RV on here. another continent, aren't you? I am. I am. I am in uh, Southern California right now. I think the last episode I recorded here, we were in uh, in New Mexico. So, you know, um, not New Mexico. Where were we? We were in um, Arizona. So anyways, the uh, we travel a lot. We're a uh, new place every couple of weeks or so, um, which I'm is fun. Uh, and you're in, uh, you're in Britain, right? I am in uh, overcast gray, the Midlands of Britain at the moment, yeah. <laughs> nice. It's not Southern California, man. It's not Southern no. California. No, but it has, the last couple of days has been cold here, so, you know, cold and cloudy, but it's warm and beautiful today, so it's good. So let me, uh, let me introduce you real quick so people know who you are, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll dive into this stuff. So, right. um, Johnny, you're, uh, um, from your, uh, your bio here, British entrepreneur, piano player, international racing driver, which is super cool, we'll have to talk about that a little bit, business coach, um, and you grew your first business to eight figures and exited and founded johnnyhatesmarketing.com, which I think is a fantastic name. Helping coaches, nice. trainers, therapists find more of their ideal clients more easily. Um, you're also the voice behind the legendary Johnny Hates Marketing Facebook group and swears that you really do, in fact, hate marketing. <laughs> Spot on. That's I a, do. All those things. That's, <laughs> that's wonderful. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about where you are today and what Johnny's known for. Um, so we talk all the time on our show, you know, heroes are sort of known for something. So what is it that you're known for? What do people come to Johnny for help with? Yeah, right now people are coming to me in droves, uh, coaches and therapists uh, specifically to, um, um, so that I can help them find more of their ideal clients more easily without paid advertising. So. That's my bag. It's about organic conversation-based marketing for high-ticket programs for coaches and therapists. Conversation-based marketing. What, does, what do you mean by conversation-based marketing? Well, um, it, it's the opposite of um, spray and pray, as we call it. It's the opposite of uh, <laughs> appealing to a wide audience through advertising, for example. Uh, it, it's the opposite of believing that you need to be viral on social media. You know, that you need a, a massive audience and a massive reach. Um, it's the basic concept that if you um, set out your soul and demonstrate clearly what it is you do and who it's for. So, you know, two of my three pillars of effortless marketing are what you actually do and who it's for. Many, many coaches and therapists are at a point where they haven't really worked that out yet. Uh, and yeah. so they, they can't express it clearly. But if you're very clear about that, then you will attract people. You can corral people together in a, a, in a Facebook group, for example, or on, on your LinkedIn network. And uh, what you can then do is just identify people who look like your next ideal client and just let her tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, found your comment interesting or enjoyed reading your post or something like that. Um, why don't we just jump on a call sometime soon see if I can share any insights that might help um, and you get on a Zoom call like you and I are now except not, not a podcast <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, that, and that's where the magic happens you know, in a conversation where you can uh, establish common ground you can um, easily demonstrate to your potential client that you really deeply care about them you care about the outcomes 
um, and that you're you know completely locked into creating an impact on their on their life and their business. Uh, and you just simply make a, an offer to to help them and work with them. It doesn't feel like a sales process then, which really speaks to you know my audience of, of coaches and therapists because many of them hate selling. You know, they hate the idea of being salespeople. They just yeah. want to help. They just want to help people. Yeah. So I, 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 sorry, go on. I say it's an interesting, uh, interesting, interesting way to approach it because it's still a sales process and they still are selling, yeah. but it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's an authentic way to sell. And, um, you know, I found that once you sort of really understand what selling is, that's the heart yeah. of selling, finding someone who has a problem and finding a way to help them. Um, exactly. And, Have you been reading Seth Godin by any chance? <laughs> uh, I haven't. I haven't actually. Oh, he 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 agrees with you, which I think you should take as a compliment, because um, in his in his latest masterpiece called um, "This Is Marketing," his mm -hmm. definition of marketing is the the generous act of helping someone solve a problem. Yeah, that's uh, that that is exactly what we're uh, we we talk about all the time. Is is that. Uh, sales and marketing is really about serving a market solve help them solve a problem help them move forward and you know have a better life yeah. um and so, yeah so wh wh where i come from what i want to show people is um um who their market is you know identify a, a client avatar um and then understand along with that your own superpower you know what you can bring what your what the massive transformational benefit is that you you bring to the world and specifically to that client and then, uh, as as you uh, as you say, Richard, you know you can you can then um, simply solve solve a problem for them, and they'll love you forever at that point. Won't they? Yeah, that's uh, one of the things that I talk about in my digital alchemy program is is learning how to find um, find what it is that you are good at, what it is that you uh, um, you how you can help someone transform their lives and everything. So it's a uh, um, yeah, it's. Totally. Uh, powerful process um, and I think I think more people need to uh, uh, they need that that message for growing their business is figuring out what their difference is um, and learning how to communicate that difference um, yeah really because, yeah. yeah so it's really good so what I want to talk a little bit about is your origin story right so every hero has one and this is when you started to realize that you were different that maybe you had superpowers and you could use them to help other people so take us back to the beginning a little bit of how you sort of got into this entrepreneur journey, right? I know you, you know, just from your introdu introduction, you have a lot of, a uh, lot of things going on over the last, uh, um, over your life, life story. Yeah, here. The last few decades. Yeah. I mean, what I, I think what, when I first realized, um, I, I was different was when I realized I didn't want a job. I didn't actually want to have a job. I've never been employed, but I've never never had a job. I've never picked up a paycheck <laughs> or, or had a pay slip. Um, in my 20s, I found, I found that I was relatively capable as, as a musician because I've been playing piano since I was uh, eight years old. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I managed to pick up some gigs. So that kind of sustained me through my 20s. You know, I was a professional musician. And, and I'm proud to say that now I'm a... Uh, just a lifelong musician who plays for, for passion and enjoyment, you know. Um, I, I, I didn't make a ton of money doing it, but crikey, it's quite entrepreneurial, you know, looking back on that. Yeah. I never, never used that word about it, but, you know, hustling for gigs and, uh, you know, positioning yourself with an agent and making the agent believe that you're worth putting out into into his world, you know. Um, that there's an art to it, and I, I knew at the time, although I didn't really know what I was doing, I was a bit better at that than some of the other bands that were out there that weren't getting the work we were. I mean, th th this kind of work is, uh, you know, cabaret sort of work, you know, not pop star type musician, but, you know, working on cruise ships. We, we, we had some great trips out in the Caribbean and all the rest of it and got paid for it, which is just wonderful. Uh, yeah. A lot of the top hotels in London and then the kind of wedding circuit. You, you, I'm sure you know the thing that there's, there's lots of bands in SoCal doing, doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's not particularly lucrative. It, it sustains you at a certain level, particularly when you're in your 20s and you're prepared to sleep on someone's couch and all the rest of it. Um, but by the time I got you know into my 30s, and I, I met my first wife, we got married. 
it was clear I had to be doing something more substantial. And I, I just fell in with a guy. We, we set up a business um, selling home improvements, um, k- kitchen remodeling, as you call it in the States, um, fitted kitchens. With yeah. and, and that sustained me for a while. And um, I kind of grew out of that and, and got into financial services as I got into my 40s. And we, um, my, myself and another, another chap, we started a business uh, advising people on pensions and investments and insurance. So, you know, kind of brokerage, I think you call them in the States. Um, and we, we really decided to go big on that. You know, we saw an opportunity, a marketing led opportunity. Um, we, we were pretty good at promoting the business. Anyway, we, we grew over seven years to, to that eight figure level that, that you alluded to earlier. So we, um, when we sold it in 2003, we had um, 200 staff with eight offices around the UK and a 10 million turnover, 10.2 million, I think we did in 2003. Wow. And, and, we, and, we, and we sold it. Uh, so that, that was kind of the end of that, of that era of that kind of entrepreneurship for me. And what I learned from that was, number one, that I didn't like financial services particularly. Um, not a fun business by any means and heavily regulated and all that kind of thing. Um, so you had, you had kind of two imperatives, you know, you had to keep the business growing, but you, you also had to do it within a very tight framework of what you couldn't, couldn't do and couldn't, couldn't say every day, you know? Yeah. Um, so for a kind of freedom chaser like me, it, it, it's not an appealing industry. But the, the other thing that I learned was, um, I don't want to employ that many people again, you know, the, the, yeah. the burden of responsibility when you actually care about people, basically, which I, I like to think I do, of having 200 people and their families depending on you. It, it just got a little bit much. And um, it came into focus, actually, when we had one of our annual events and everybody descended on one place. And I was just looking out the window into the car park and I said to my business partner, you know, we, we're paying for all those cars. You know, it was like 50 or 60 cars, I guess. <laughs> They're all our yeah. cars. And we're paying all the mortgages for the people who drive them, you know. And it just came to us that, whoo, you know, maybe time for a reset, which is, you know, we, we took the offer t- to sell. And since then, I just kind of fell into business consulting. So that's kind of 15 years ago. So for a decade and a half, I've just been a, a kind of rag bag of a business consultant, business coach, you know, kind of um, helping anybody who appeared like they wanted help. You can yeah. See how- all this is kind of anti the stuff that I do now is the opposite of what I do now. Um, and I just, by 2015, I was overwhelmed. I had too many clients that were paying too little money and demanding too much time. Uh, that sort of oh, classic conundrum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Don't we all, you know, I think the only way you can truly learn that kind of stuff is to, is to try it yourself and experience it yourself. Cause yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you, you just have to go through the mud. You go through the mud, man. Because you, you, you don't believe when somebody else tells you they've done it. You go, oh, that's, that's them, not me. But I'll, I'll tell you something. In 2015, I, I was probably serving uh, 25 active clients, something like that. They were mm-hmm. paying me a little bit each month, you know, a few hundred quid each, basically, on retainers. Um, but, I, yeah, I was just exhausted. I say underpaid, overworked. I, 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 I started looking around at some of the really kind of successful business coachy type folks around the world a lot of them in the states you know your countrymen people like frank kern um mike yeah. dillard maybe you've seen mike dillard. Worked, yeah. worked with frank does some training with his group oh super yeah bill barron you know another guy's out there do, doing some good stuff yeah. um and I, I just i just kind of learned very quickly from them how they were doing things differently from how i was um three or four years ago Number one, it seemed they were very, very clear on what it was they did. You know, they had a very mm-hmm. clear, simple message. Um, you know, I mean, you think about people like Ryan Levesque, you know, the ask method. You know, that's his, that's his deal. Yeah. Isn't it? Um, and, and then they were clear on who their client avatar was. You know, they went out and attracted a particular kind of person. And that was completely foreign to me. You know, I was just going to work with anybody who'd have me sort of thing, you know. Um, and then the, 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 the third thing that all these, these successful coaches have done is they've productized their services. So I was still selling mm-hmm. my time. I was still selling my time by the hour in 2015, you know, giving hourly rates or day rates or 
even a monthly retainer, you know, which again, there's no time leverage in any of those things. It's just swapping your time for money, isn't it? Um, so when I learned the concept of productizing your services and marketing a program, which could be, you know, even my kind of high ticket program has four people on it. You know, it's a, it's a small group guided coaching program. But yeah. you know, the, the sky's the limit, isn't it? When, when you have a, a digital program, a downloadable program, you can have 10,000 people downloading it. So, you know, I was just enraptured by 2015. I was convinced that I had to leave my old life behind and get into the whole new world of time leverage, you know, productization yeah. of services, niching and specializing. Um, and you know what? Especially so and more than generalists, don't they, in any field? So, yeah. Uh, that, that's that's how I got to where I am really. I just decided that my niche would be other coaches and therapists because they it seemed like they were my tribe. You know, I could understand them. I, I've, I've been where they are, kind of thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, 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 so, that's my that's my kind of involvement really from a a chrysalis into you a have, you have a really a really interesting story that's covered a lot of things. So, like one of, one of the things that we've talked about a couple of times on the show in the past is the idea that you you should be aware of the monster that you're building right um and you alluded to that with your your business right you built this business to 10 million dollars had 200 employees and realized yeah. that it's not the business you wanted right it's not not what you wanted to be doing um yeah. and the for whatever reason there is a stigma in the business community about people who run the types of businesses that you and i would run right where yes. we have we have a coaching and consulting business or something like that. And they're like, you don't have a real business, right? Cause you don't have a product or you don't have a huge team or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah which is, is ridiculous. I'm not sure why they get stick on you, but list the, um, one of the things that I found really, really potent in my life is understanding like I, uh, um, I had a, a couple of, Particular in my uh, the ability to be you know, really able to do it. The uh, decisions that we made were always like, I don't want to have a large team. I don't want to have, you know, be tied to a specific location or an office or something like that. And um, you know, I was keenly aware of the monster I was building and was trying to build my business to a specific place, which I know is not a thing that a lot of people do. Right? They don't start off thinking about. Um, uh, about the lifestyle that the business you be you create is going to going to return to you right yeah. um and um and which is which is not always a bad thing right sometimes you have a mission that's bigger than whatever your desire would be right where it's like you know if you're talking about an apple computer or a microsoft or a google or something like that you're building something like that you have you know you have to build a big monster which is fine mm. right there's nothing wrong with that type of business but i think it's uh, sure. it's important particularly for people to to know ahead of time Am I the kind of person who's trying to build a 200 person office that's doing, you know, $10 million across the country? Am I looking to build a, a lifestyle business that hits a certain income goals and, um, and lets me, you know, do what I'm, I want to do. And just like being clear on that, I think is a important thing. And you learn that lesson the hard way. <laughs> well, it, it, it may well be that I'm just at a different time in my life now that the, the, the appetite for that kind of growth is, isn't necessarily there, but you, you know what, um, it wasn't a very efficient business looking back because in net terms, I'm probably t taking as much revenue from my practice now at a fraction of the size and fraction of the turnover uh, uh, as I was then. I mean, you know, we, we, we say in the UK, I don't know whether you've got a similar phrase, but turnover is vanity, profits are sanity. Yeah. Um, you know, so the, the headline figure means nothing because it, it, it's what, what the company is actually creating in income, isn't it? That, that's that's mm -hmm. important. Um, and, and looking back, you know, the, the actual drawings, if you like, you know, the, the money we're taking from the business monthly is about the same as 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 I'm earning now doing this with just me and, and four four freelancers. You know? Yeah. So it's which it's, is it's, which it's is crazy, right? Isn't? Yeah, because I, I know like my my business is, um, you know, we've grown about four or five times over the last couple of years, 4x. Uh, yeah. And, and my my team consists of me, one full time VA, a part time VA, 
um, graphic design retainer and a yeah. part-time developer, right? So there's like mm-hmm. five pretty, people. Pretty much same as me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so like there's, there's not a lot that goes into it. Um, mm-hmm. And it's very, very automated. Like we were talking before we get on the show, like when this recording is done, Zoom will automatically transcribe it and automatically send it to my VA and robots take over and automatically yeah. assign well, things. Talk about to my that. Team. I like that idea. <laughs> yeah. So, so most of most of what I do is very hands off, right? And I still I still work on retainer with most of my clients, but it's high ticket retainer, and a lot of the work that gets done is is gets done by teams by my team members um, and gets, uh, gets done automatically. Um, so, so you can, you can leverage technology and leverage a small team to accomplish a lot of things, um, which is really cool. It's a cool place to be in. So anyways, I find that it's just an interesting, interesting that your, your story went through that kind of an arc um, because um, it's something that we've, uh, we've talked about <clears throat> yeah, um, a few times. So, I, mean, you, I, I, I am actually up for exponential growth again, but it's going to mean something different uh, altogether. Um, I, I've just just this week actually engaged um, a, a, a really key member of my team who's going to help me uh, grow my business to seven figures. So nice. it's mission 2020. So I, I want to have some 80, 90 grand months in 2020. And uh, she's going to help me do it. Um, she's actually guided two of the coaches that I know of in my circles to six figure launches, you know, sort of hundred thousand dollar launches, um, with a kind of four or five week ramp up to that, you know? So, um, yeah, we've done that a couple of times with, uh, with clients. I think we've done, uh, we did 115 K launch, 125 K launch. Um, anyways, there it's fun, fun to do that kind of stuff. It, it, it really is. I, I can't wait. You know, it just sounds like, um, I gotta, it just sounds like something that I, I ought to do, you know? Yeah. I got one client who just hit, uh, they hit $786,000 this last year. Um, and they're on, on track to crack a million this year, crack a million, maybe a million and a quarter um, doing coaching. Um, That's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What, the, what, uh, what a, I know this is you interviewing me, but what size of a business is that? Um, how many people? Um, so are he's, he has um, one sales guy. He has one full-time U.S. assistant um, and himself. Um, so it's a three-person team. Uh, yeah, and he's, he's, he, put a, he put almost 100% of his profits the first year into media buying. Um, so, I mean, he spent, he spent like half a million dollars on media buying to make himself famous. Um, yeah. wow. <laughs> uh, but anyways, it, it, it's uh, definitely paid off. Um, uh, on on the other side of, of what he's doing now, so I mean it's it's yeah. crazy, and you can do a lot of you can you can definitely build a big business on a huge on a very small team um, nowadays by leveraging technology and leveraging just massive reach that we have the yeah. ability to have. Mm. So and it's also cool too because you can reach you can reach your audience right. You can reach that tribe like the specific tribe you were talking about, um, yeah. and uh, you know easier now than it's ever been before, um, which is which is really cool. So yeah. you alluded to this a little while ago that you help your clients find their superpowers, so to speak. So I'm going to talk a little bit about your superpower. It's what it is that you do or build or offer to your clients that really helps them solve problems. The things that, you know, help them slay, you know, slays the slay your clients villains. What is, what would you say your, uh, your superpower is? Yeah. My, my, my one thing really is, creating absolute clarity and simplicity in process and, and business systems. Um, so many coaches and therapists, because they, they spend all their lives learning how to be, you know, good coaches or good therapists, um, I haven't really studied any, any of the sort of basic business stuff or, or basic marketing. Mm-hmm. So when they try and, do, when they try and, you know, get out into the world and start telling people about what they do. Um, they're overwhelmed by it because there are so many different ways that they can do it. So many marketing platforms, so many social media platforms, you know? Um, yeah. So many I, 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 yeah. I, I help them cut through the fog, cut through the overwhelm. Um, and, and it's about this, this 
being very specific, being very, very focused. I'm a, I'm a great kind of advocate of the inch wide, mile deep thing when it comes to niching, mm -hmm. the client avatar development, you know, um, showing people that trying to appeal to everyone just means you'll appeal to no one, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, th I think my, my, my one superpower is my, my, my passion for simplicity, for, for clarity, um, for basically doing as little work as possible for as much imp impact. You know, and, and yeah, and so you 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 walk in and help a client really identify who their person is, and then how to talk to that person, and then basically how you build a business around talking to that person, yeah, right? Quite, what you called conversational marketing. Exactly, exactly, and create a really simple conversational funnel. You know, if we want to bring the F word into it, um, <laughs> a, a funnel from. Um, somebody who doesn't know you to joining in your world, you know, joining your group or your, your LinkedIn network, getting to know a little bit about you and then giving you the effectively the permission to, to say, just tap them on the shoulder and say, Hey, you know, we need to talk. I think I can help. Let's share some insights and, and get yeah. on a call. And, you know, what, once, once my clients understand how to do that, it's like a fog has lifted, you know? Uh, it's like they've overcome, yeah. the, overcome the vagueness virus, as I say. Yeah. yeah, and what's interesting is what what you're ultimately doing is you're helping them to close deals and put revenue on the bottom line, right? Which changes that's, their lives. That's what, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Yeah. There, there's sometimes a bit of you know mindset, particularly money mindset work that we do along the way. Um, you know what it's like, people feeling unworthy imposter syndrome all that kind of thing and, and also yeah. you know after maybe a few years of of hard knocks and, and bumping along the bottom people kind of get used to being poor you know yeah <laughs> they get used to not having a lot of money right um so even the thought of a transition into relative prosperity and wealth can be can be scary you know they can actually be afraid of that uh, yeah <laughs> and so they, they kind of get comfortable having no money you know, le learning how to make ends meet if you want i've noticed i've noticed the same thing happening in my life with time as well right having having a wealth of time i feel um and uh, like this was an intentional thing right getting my business to a point where i could run my business on five six hours a day instead of 18 hours a day and yeah. make more money doing it um I feel like, um, you know, you have that, that same thing. Like I'm, I feel like I'm not doing it enough. Like I'm cheating myself yeah. or something, but yeah. I'm like, but it's working. Right? Oh, it's doing I, I, these things. Yeah. And so, yeah. So the same thing happens with money, but, um, uh, you know, like the, my, I was just talking with my wife this, this week, I was like, we're going to have more extra money this month than like my wife made all year when we got married. <laughs> The, the, so. These numbers are just crazy. I mean, it's the same in my family, actually. I mean, my 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 wife um, was a very very uh, experienced and and an expert uh, carer. You know, she's a, a nurse. Mm -hmm. um, but crikey, yeah, what, what one month's revenue now in the business is is her annual salary when she was yeah. a nurse. You know, and and yeah, and, and that's what yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy to be at that point, right? Where, where you're just like, man, like we're, we're, you know, all the bills are paid and what's left in the bank account at the end of the month is, is more than we used to make in a year. Um, yeah. and, and you're just like, that's, that's a crazy place to be, but it's also like, it's a scary place to be. Right. And, and, um, and you have to get your mental, like your mental game in place to be able to handle that. Um, yeah, yeah it's a, it's a, um, it's really cool. Right. Yeah, well, I, 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 have a, I have a way of kind of recon, reconciling that and help, helping other people reconcile that when they start to get successful. Um, that if you regard the money just as a barometer of your impact, mm -hmm. so just a measure of how much you're helping people, then you're going to feel a lot better as that, like you said, the money in the bank increases because um, that's just a measure of how many people you've helped. If you've got 50 grand yeah. in the bank, you could say, well, you know, there's kind of 50 people I've helped. There, there must be some conversion yeah. there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, then, yeah. Uh, and I like, it, I like it to talk just in terms like of dirty money then, does it? 
Yeah, I like to talk in terms of like your your your. I t- what I tell my kids all the time is you're compensated in um, direct proportion to the value you bring to the world. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And what's what's really yeah. happened is that I've learned to become more valuable to more people at scale, right? Yeah. And that's that's what you help people do is you learn them how to take their take their value, um, and you know you're talking about identifying their avatar and getting their sales process down, um, and what that does is once they once they can actually make that sale, now that they can convey their value to that person. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times a coach and a therapist, um, coaches and therapists have, have a ripple effect. So they're not just helping that one person, they're helping all the oh, yeah. people that that person can now help. So, yeah. so their That's value right. goes through the roof because of the number of people they're helping and things like, um, things like that. The, uh, so your, your indirect impact, I think, has a huge, a huge, uh, huge piece of that. And you'll realize that your your impact um as your impact goes up your value goes up the amount of um revenue that you make goes up um so yeah i think yeah, you're exactly to, to, totally I, I love um I, I love what you said there about the ripple effect um i, I haven't used that phrase but it, it's clear isn't it you know when i was a business consultant uh i was helping that business and some of them some of them were selling stuff that you know was was irrelevant to most people you know but clearly now a coach and a therapist who's successful is going to be going out into the world, um, mm-hmm. I- impacting people's lives and, and helping more people. So it's a great way to look at it that, you know, um, in, in my position, it's, I feel really privileged that I'm, I wouldn't say I'm at the top of the pyramid, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm overlooking the, this network of people who themselves are having big impacts. So, uh, yeah, 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 and it's fun, it? it's a really cool it's a really cool place to be, right? So, you know, I've got yeah, I had a really client is. who's got like he's got three or four hundred people that he's helped become you know uh, millionaires in the real estate space. I have another client who's helped like just in the last year they had thirty one new millionaires in their uh, um, in ecom space, and you're like, that's cool. Like I didn't, Good, huh? yeah, like I didn't directly help any of those people, but I helped the I helped my clients reach those people and do the yeah. thing that they do. Um, and so you realize you have, you have like leveraged value, um, yeah. when uh, you do this kind of work, which is, I think really cool. Um, yeah. so yeah, I want to switch, switch just a little bit from the superpower to the opposite side of a hero, which is the fatal flaw, right? Every superhero has their fatal flaws. You know, Batman, sorry, Batman's not a hero or he's not actually a super, uh, Superman's got his kryptonite. Um, I tell people <laughs> that my, uh, my my fatal flaw a lot of times is uh um, or it used to be anyways i used to be a a like horrible perfectionist i would spend like uh you know more hours than are reasonable on you know getting one pixel to go into the right spot and realizing that it has nothing to do with producing revenue and it's just busy work um and you know you get to the you know the, the place where you realize that uh perfection is like the lowest standard you can hold yourself to um right and you start changing those things but <laughs> the lowest standard yeah. So, so what would you say your fatal flaw has been in growing your, your latest business here? And more importantly, what have you done to overcome that? So other people who might struggle with it can, uh, can, can learn from you. Um, yeah, it's, it's been procrastination probably. And, it, and it's close cousin than sort of overwhelm. I think overwhelm can drive procrastination. So, mm-hmm. you know, my, uh, my, my launching myself into effectively a, a, a new world for me in 2015. Um, I've not seen people face to face, pulling away completely from done for you services to, mm. you know, digital coaching um, and understanding that I can impact people all around the world. There's just so much there, which when it's laid out in front of you, just seems like, whoa, where do I start? You know, so it took me a good while to get going. You know, I messed around for kind of six to eight months thinking, what the hell am I going to do? What am I, you know, what can I do? Um, so the overwhelm of that bred procrastination, then, which I still suffer from a bit now, you know, when I've got an idea to launch a new project, I'm kind of a little bit, well, it's going okay now. It's going okay for now. What I'm doing is going okay. Let me just put off this new launch for another month, or another month, another month. You know, so I, I, I haven't, I haven't taken advantage of every, every opportunity I've had. Um, I've turned my back on some JV simply because I couldn't decide how I was going to leverage them, how I was going to work them out. 
So I'm getting better at that. You know, I've, I've taken on a couple of coaches this year who are helping me to get clarity on, on my growth strategy, you know, where I need to be getting to. So I think the quick answer to your question is um, procrastination. Just being happy so, and sitting there doing nothing, you know. Yeah, and, and you mentioned you mentioned one of the things that you've been doing is hiring coaches in to help you with your clarity and your movement, um, which yeah. uh, do you, how important do you think that that is for someone when they find themselves stuck and needing to move forward to bring someone else to just, you know, I guess, kick your ass, so to speak? <laughs> yeah, it almost felt too late when I was stuck. You know, I wish I'd never stopped playing a coach. Mm -hmm. um, someone to run alongside you, someone to hold you accountable. And, you know, here, here's the news, folks, for your listeners, you know, anyone thinking of uh, who they should be coached by. Um, you only need somebody who's a couple of steps ahead of you, you know, somebody yeah. who's kind of lived your life, lived your journey perhaps a year or so ago, a couple of years ago, and they've broken through it and they're clearly at, at a slightly higher level. Um, I, I like to work with coaches who are j just a wee bit ahead of, ahead of me, you know. So I, I, they've, they've, got, they've got current and relevant knowledge of, of what I'm going through and they can help me through. Um, but I, I think you should never stop learning. You know, I, I'm committed now. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stop paying a coach ever. It may not be the same coach. You know, it would be different coaches. I need at different points in my life. But, um, yeah. like, you know, it, the, 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 the impact that they have on me and the difference they make to my business just um, pays, yeah. their, pays their fees time and time again, you know? Yeah, I found the, uh, the same thing with uh, like having a, a small mastermind group where the people in the group are yeah. either ahead of you or driving with you, right? They're going the same direction um, yeah. and are willing to dive in and help push you forward has been really, really helpful. Yes. Um, you know, surrounding yourself with, you know, they, what, what they say, uh, you know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Ain't um, that true? Ain't that true? Yeah. And so if you're, you're intentional about, about spending time, even if it's digitally, right, digitally spending time with people that are either running faster than you or are further ahead than you or are driving you to go faster, right, those kind mm. of people um, really help you grow your business as well. Um, and yeah. it's the same similar type of thing to hiring a coach, right? You, you, I, I, I've had to, you know, do the same thing where you hire a coach and bring someone in and spend money and figure out what, what's going on. But it's, uh, I've also found you can get similar, similar value from having a, a mastermind group that, uh, which a lot of times you have to pay for those. You have to pay to get into a mastermind group that's worth its salt, um, yes. really help drive, drive those things. So, yeah. Um, it's definitely a great, uh, a great way to help yourself break through things that are keeping you stuck. Yeah. Yeah, de de definitely. You know, having said everything we said about not growing a massive business, it's still worth making strategic alliances, isn't it, with with the right mm -hmm. people at the right time. You yeah, know, absolutely. I, I, I think it's almost like JVs are the new employment. You know, just yeah, just joint ventures people. and getting into uh, yeah. getting into all the um, all the the things that sort of make the internet go around, um, and you know all the stuff that's going on. So. To continue the uh, the hero story, the uh, um, uh, every hero has has a, a common enemy, right? So you know, Spider Man fights to save New York, Batman <laughs> fights to save Gotham, Google fights to index all of the world's information, um, right? You know, uh, what would you say? Uh, what would you say your your driving force is? The thing that you you really wish you could uh, um, you could affect in people's lives. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a dent in the coaching universe. I, I would really like, and, and th this is actually a written goal of mine, it's a mission statement, actually, that uh, I want to impact the lives of 100,000 coaches and therapists by 2025. So we've got six years to go there. It's looking good. Um, That's ambitious. Yeah. Well, with... Um, with group programs and downloadable programs and my subscription membership community, the private members club, um, the, 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 the numbers are scalable to, to that kind of that kind of level by 2025. But what, what I mean by impacting their lives and the reason I want to do it, um, it stems back to, it's about 2015 again, when, when I, I read um, a survey by one of the big global accountancy firms 
um, PwC or something like that. And um, th they'd, they'd worked out that the average coaching income around the world was 30,000 pounds or do mm -hmm. dollars in, in US. Um, and it just seemed to me for the, for the incredible level of skills that, that, that a lot of these coaches have and, and therapists as well, um, that kind of remuneration is just um, pitiful, really. It's just a shame, basically, that their yeah. skills are not being put out there. They're not having the impact on Especially the Especially since coaching and consulting is one of the fastest growing industries in the world. Yeah, but you know, within a figure like thirty thousand, obviously there's a there's a bunch of people who are doing inordinately well, like in any industry. Um, so that there must equally be a, a lot of people who are earning next to nothing, you know, doing what they're doing. So it just seemed a shame, and it's it's a bit of a mission for me, you know. If I find someone who's a heart centered therapist, a coach, and they're just getting started, or they've been doing it a while and haven't cracked the code of client, client attraction then you know helping them uh, get to the next level helping them burst through that, that average earnings into you know i guess the steps are five grand a month and then five figures a month and, and beyond you know if i can help um, people do that then it feels like a bit of a quest a bit of a mission because the, the world needs coaching doesn't it you know the world needs people who can help their clients help people be more calm get over mental health issues, uh, you know, be more kind to each other and all the rest of this nice touchy-feely stuff that'll make the world a better place to live in. So if I can make that little dent from my side, then I'm going to be putting people out into the world who can, uh, like we said earlier, you know, Im impact more and more and more people. So I, I don't know, yeah. look, at that, look at that number of 100,000. God knows how many clients they'll have. So could be in the millions couldn't it so that indirectly I'm, I'm having quite an impact by that point hopefully yeah so that's that's really interesting on a um from a for having having something that is that specific um as your goal how do you think that's impacted the decisions that you make um as you're building your programs and choosing what to do for marketing and what podcasts to come guest on how do you think hey. having a very specific goal like that has impacted that kind of decision making it, it drives everything I do, Richard. It informs everything I do. Um, you know, when I, when I dream of a new program, I, I'm working out how many people are going to be on it, how many launches I'm going to have, you know, how many people can come through it. Um, the, the, the big numbers like that clearly will always be with the low ticket programs. You know, I, I, my, my private members club is only £67 a month, which is like 97 bucks. So, you know, there will be hundreds and thousands of people through that. Uh, in the next five or six years. Hopefully many of them will stay as well. Um, then I've got the, the medium ticket group coaching program and my one-on-one, -on -one, which is which is ultra high ticket kind of thing. Right, I'm just developing a program now called the Client Attraction Academy, which is gonna be a, a downloadable version of my hands-on group coaching program. And that's only gonna be a thousand quid, basically 997. Um, so I think that's going to be affordable to to many many more people than my uh, current sort of medium ticket offering. So you know we could get hundreds of people through that, couldn't we, uh, every year, uh, which is is great for my my bottom line, but even better for for my impact on the world. Absolutely. Yeah. So, random cultural question: What's the difference between a pound and a quid? Oh, a quid is a pound. It's just the colloquialism. It's like a buck and a dollar, basically. Oh, okay, got it. So I was, I was trying to figure out. I was like, I don't know what a quid is. Is that, is that different than a pound? So there you go. It's just. <laughs> I, I, I think it's from the Latin, isn't it? I mean, Google might prove me wrong, a cursory research, but it feels like quid pro quo, um, that kind of fair exchange. It must be related to that. Oh, okay, yeah. You, you, you give a. Yeah, that makes sense. You, you give a note and you get something back that you've purchased for it. You know, so it's, it's a quid. Yeah. That's one yeah, so it's just the same way we we use buck instead of dollar. It's just Absolutely. a couple of bucks. Absolutely. Got it. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, about your common enemy, right? So if you could go into your clients' lives and just remove one thing that is holding them back, like magic wand style, kind of remove it, and you know would help them break through immediately, what would that be? 
I think it's the mistaken belief that they have to try and help everybody. So why do you think people believe they have to help everybody? Because they can and probably because they have. So starting up, you know, the process when you learn to be a coach, you know, you may have got a qualification out and some kind of accreditation and, and you kind of go around your friends and say, Hey, can I coach you? You know, let me, you know, I'm a coach now. Um, so you get a rag bag of different people. You get a cross section of the human race, if you like. And mm -hmm. you mistakenly believe that that's the way you can build your business and you can carry on just appealing to everyone, you know, try and just get anybody through the door that looks like you, you ought to help them. Um, Whereas, of course, that, that's, that's, that, that makes the whole task of marketing really, really, really difficult. Because you have no um, one to talk to. You have no one to talk to. You have no one specific to talk to. You can't corral people together in groups, either for prospecting conversations or, or, for, or for sale. Um, so th that's what changed everything for me, you know, deciding to focus on coaches and therapists. What's lovely about that niche, not, not just that they need my help, but they're, they're easily identifiable. You know, how many coaching groups are there on, on Facebook? You know, people, call, people call <laughs> themselves coach. People call themselves therapist on LinkedIn. So, you know, you can do a cursory search. And, and, and the, the LinkedIn algorithm has, has now learned that I only want to connect with coaches and therapists. So in my feed of people that I might know and might want to connect to, it only shows me coaches and therapists now. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a. Uh, you mentioned Frank Kern earlier. One of the things Frank Kern um, talks about is, in order to make money in whatever your business is, you have to solve a problem for an easy, uh, easily identifiable group of people yes. with money. Perfect. Right. So, like, that's the formula. It's like, it's like you have to find Absolutely. solve a problem, right? So that's first part. If you can't solve a problem, you can't help anyone. Then you have to do it for an easily identifiable group of people. And that yeah. group of people should have money to help you to, to solve the problem. Yeah, exactly. Right. I, I only overlay one right. thing on that, and that's a perfect definition otherwise, um, that you have to enjoy working with them. So, you know, that's a good people, yeah. that's what, what people you, you actually care about. Um, I, I guess when you have the distance that, that Frank Kern has, or, you know, his business is about downloadable stuff, it, it don't matter so much, but in our kind of, you know, organic conversation based high ticket sales where you're working with them for a period directly. You've got to kind of like them. You've got to want to. You got to enjoy working with them. You got to enjoy working with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's an important part. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was, uh, was something I learned. Um, I went to a, a preaching college. I learned, I learned uh, in, in school, I was trained to be a preacher. No and one of the, yeah, one of the lessons that we learned in preaching class was when speaking to an audience, um, one of the things that they taught you was how to speak to an audience. And the realization is that what, what basically the, what it came down to is there's no such thing as an audience, right? An audience doesn't exist. A group doesn't exist. They are just, you know, they're blanket terms we use to describe a set of individuals, yes. right? In the same way that like, if you look at the words hot and cold, cold doesn't exist, right? Cold isn't a thing. It's a, a word we use to describe a certain level of heat, uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah. right? So, so it's, not, like it's it. not an actual tangible thing. Um, same way that groups and audiences aren't a tangible thing. And okay. so the exercise that we went through um, was if, if you're standing in the front of a classroom or the front of an audience or digitally talking to a, you know 100,000 people online, yeah. If you look at an individual in the audience and you ask them a question, but tell them not to respond, and then you ask the audience, who did I ask that question to? The person you were looking at and everyone around them in a five to 10 foot circle will all raise their hands. Hmm. Now, if you do the same thing and you go to a different part That's of the audience and you look between two people at a blank space, ask yeah. the same question, tell the audience not to respond and then ask them, who did I ask the question to? Nobody will raise their hand because wow. you're not connecting with anyone. Right. And, and oh, you have to, you have to connect with an individual. You have to look at an individual. Um, right. So that's a public speaking tip, but the mm. concept of 
speaking to an individual, when you speak to an individual, you will actually attract the, all the people that are around and similar to that individual, um, yeah. which is a, uh, it's an important like part of what you're talking about with knowing yeah, who. I, I, I love that, is. Richard, you know, to use a preachy term, you know, amen to that, you know, I mean, that, <laughs> that, that, that is, that is just such a perfect um, a, a analogy, isn't it? It's such a perfect metaphor. Um, for a, attracting a bunch of people by actually speaking to one. Um, th this is at the heart of, of everything I show people how to do. You know, When we talk about your ideal client, there isn't an S on that for a very good reason. Mm -hmm. you know, that you're, you're, you're imagining this perfect client. And part of the work that we do, the exercise, is to actually find a, a, an image, you know, it can be a random Google image of someone who looks like your ideal client. Give them a name. You know, and kind of paste that up. You know, this is who I'm talking to. I just talk to that person endlessly. You know, just talk to them about their problems, their issues, in all your posts, in all your marketing, uh, and then all the people like them uh, will think you're talking to them as well. All the people around mm -hmm. them, as you've said in your church analogy, you know, all the people around them will think you're talking to them as well. Um, yeah, th there's there's just so much power in that. It's the it's the opposite of you know as I say vagueness and uh, spray and pray we call it in English sometimes you know just yeah just try and talk to everyone we call it the uh, the 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 English or the the American colloquialism is hope and pray the hope and hope pray and method pray, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 I like spray and pray it's kind <laughs> of you can imagine like a hose you know just going out everywhere. None of it lands, of course, or it quickly yeah. evaporates when you do that, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just think it's, it's so important to understand that particular thing. If, 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 some, if someone's watching this, they walk away with that one thought that I yeah. need to speak to an individual. Um, and it's important because we, we, you know, you talk a lot of times as I can help everybody. Everybody doesn't exist. It's not a thing, yeah. right? <laughs> That's just right, like yeah, yeah. you know a group or an audience is not a thing it's it's a thing we use to describe a set of individuals so you you're yeah. always helping and working with individuals and right yeah. so um anyway so that's a it's an important point um yeah I, I love that richard yeah thanks for that that additional clarity i'm i'm going to use that now i'm going to use that and yeah, i use the metaphor yeah it's a it's a great yeah. metaphor you can there, uh, it was, it was, it, I was in college when YouTube, uh, YouTube just became like public. Um, yeah. So there, there was a YouTube video that we watched of a preacher doing that exercise. You might be able to find it, but it was a long time ago. So maybe not. Uh, no, yes, yeah. yeah, Steve, you can find Thank it. You. Uh, I'm just pouring some water. I hope this isn't going to spoil your Yeah, I got, I've got, uh, I've got my water too. So, you know. No, no problem with that. I think I think our audience understands you have to do a. a <laughs> if you talk for too long, your voice goes away. Um, so, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, some practical things, right? So, your hero's tool belt, tool belt, right? So, you know, we, maybe you have a big magical hammer like Thor or a bulletproof vest like your neighborhood police officer. Maybe you just like the way Evernote or Trello, you know, works really well for your business. Do you have any particular tools you use all the time that have helped you? build the business that you build now? Uh, the, the, this is an easy one. I, I've got to jump straight in and say calendar scheduling. Calendar scheduling. Calendar scheduling. Yeah. All right, scheduling. Who do you, who do you use? Well, I use You Can Book Me. Well, there, there, there are a number out there, of course, Acuity, Calendly, and all the rest of them. Um, yeah, it, I use it, uh, Schedule it, once. It's like life-changing. <laughs> Yeah, isn't it just? I mean, th th this you've got to understand the concept before you think about wh which one to choose. And, um, you know, if you just think about what we used to do before calendar scheduling. So, you know, you'd get to hang out with somebody who said, uh, let's have a coffee sometime. And you go, uh, okay, how about Tuesday afternoon? And they go, kind of Tuesday afternoon. What about Thursday morning? You go, oh, I'm, I'm in, in, in town all day. Okay, let's look at next week. And this will go on for hours. This will go on for hours, possibly days. Yeah. If you were doing it from a distance. And then you, and if you try, yeah, try yeah, and make you a problem with anyone in an email and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> and half the time it would fizzle out before you'd even made an appointment. One or both of you would lose interest before you actually made an appointment. And I can't, you know, it's incredible. We used to put ourselves through this. But what, what's even more incredible is that anybody still puts themselves through it today. 
So this, this has yeah. to stop, guys. If you don't use a, um, a, an online calendar linked up to a calendar scheduling tool, then you're missing the biggest trick of all. You really, really, really must be doing this. Um, particularly in the kind of conversational funnel that, that Richard and I talked about so far, where you, know, you get someone to the point of maximum excitement, if you like, and you say to them in a, a nice little direct message, I think I can share some insights. Let's jump on a call and see, see if I can help, you know, my treat, whatever you want to say. And then just put in a link to your calendar scheduler. If you don't do that, they're going to come back and say, sure, when are you free? And the whole bloody charade starts again. You know, you go on for days trying to find a space in your diary that matches a space in their diary. It's nonsense. So, um, yeah, once you put your link in, uh, you know, I'm sure most people using this have the same experience. 70 to 80% of the people you supply the link to will just book an appointment. It'll just appear in your calendars by magic. So yeah. that's, the, that's the bit of tech that's made night and day difference to my business. To answer you it's, it's been a fantastic, uh, a fantastic thing for like, not, not just um, booking appointments for, for getting clients. I use it for booking appointments with existing clients. I use it for booking podcast guests. Yeah. Uh, Right. So uh, we use it for all sorts of stuff. And like one of the hacks that I do is since I do it all the time, I have to send out my link, you know, typing out my link is like, it's like HTTP colon slash slash meet me dot SO forward slash Richard W. Like it's a lot of, it's a, lot, it's a big link. Just cut and paste um, it. Yeah. So what you can do is on, on both Google and Android, uh, not Google, iPhone and Android and Mac, all those, all the systems you can do keyboard shortcuts. Um, yes. where you can find your own shortcut. So I actually, I said it. So if I type the word meet me without a, uh, without a space in it, it automatically fills in my, uh, <laughs> my calendar link. Jeez, that's a hack. I need to look at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you have an iPhone, you can just go into the keyboard and set up, a, um, set up, a um, what do you call it? A, a shortcut, you know, a shortcut, like a certain set of letters that you type. Um, and if you type okay. those letters together, it'll auto fill in, your your thing so i've set that up on my computer um just because i you know it's something i do all the time um and yeah, yeah it's it's a it's a huge thing and when you run into someone that uh that's not that doesn't use it like they ask you to you know book and you have to go back and forth a lot of times i'm like i, I can't handle it like let's just oh, use my calendar just, thing <laughs> well I, I always take the initiative if somebody says sure when are you free just just send them the link you know have a look you tell me you know when i'm free <laughs> yeah have I a look here's my calendar i tell people all the time i live and die by my calendar if my if, yes. uh, if my calendar all like went away tomorrow i would i would cry a sad sad tear because yeah, um i was what to yeah. do and it's one of the uh one of the things like i have i have four children and like they don't understand why i won't let them touch any of my devices um, like mom will let them touch the devices all she wants. And I'm like, <laughs> the, the most important thing is my calendar. Cause they go into my calendar and delete things. I'm like, you, you know, you can't yeah. touch my devices because that is access to my calendar and my calendar. I live and die by my calendars. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that, that, yeah. that's, that's my, my tech tip with that. I don't. Are you tired of trying to write webinars that don't consistently convert? How would you like to have a webinar that effortlessly created sales in your online business? You can. Introducing the Webinar Alchemy Workshop. Webinar Alchemy Workshop is an online masterclass that will help you write incredibly persuasive webinars for your online courses quickly and easily. Using what you learn in this class, you can build a webinar that educates your entire audience while still creating sales. For a limited time, you can purchase this masterclass for only $7, and you'll get the exact framework I've personally used to help my clients sell more than a million dollars worth of online coaching and training just over the last year. Simply text the word ALCHEMY, A-L-C-H-E-M-Y, to 444-999, and I'll send you all the details. The music is by Purple Planet Music. Visit www.purple-planet.com. <laughs> cool. So let's talk a little bit about your own personal heroes, right? You know, Frodo had his Gandalf, Luke had Obi-Wan, Robert Kiyosaki had his Rich Dad. Who are some of your heroes? Were they real life, um, you know, mentors? Were they speakers or authors? Were they peers who were maybe just a few years ahead of you? And how important were they to what you've accomplished so far in your coaching business? Uh, right. Well, um, I, I guess my, my influences in the uh, coaching space um, 
The first guy that I really, really hooked onto was a guy called Stu McLaren. You've come across Stu. He's a Canadian recurring revenue guru. Um, and I feel uh, like I've heard his name. Yeah. So he's really big in the recurring revenue space. He, his big claim to fame, I think, that got his business rolling was they helped Michael Neal, the um, New York Times best-selling author and mind coach. He helped him calm his life down from flying all over the country, book signings and speaking at events uh, into a digital business, basically, um, on recurring revenue, build up a subscription community, if you like. So mm -hmm. Stu McLean was a, a real early influencer, both in the, uh, the, the kind of marketing that he was doing. Um, re really impressed me, you know, his reach and his programs and downloadable videos and all that kind of thing. And then, of course, um, the guy we've already mentioned, Frank Kern, I I've subscribed to him for, for many years and uh, just really admired the stuff he was doing. You know, you, you could really, really see that, uh, you know, he'd built an empire on the back of all the classic, um, you know, funnel stuff. So you can, um, what, what appeals to me about these people as well is not just admiring them from afar, but kind of reverse engineering what they're doing, you know, yeah. looking, looking at the bits that are, that are the magic dust that they're sprinkling on their process, you know, what makes their process work when somebody else who might be appearing to be doing the same thing just doesn't work as well, you know. I, and I guess with people like Frank, you know, it's his four million person email list that helps, you know. <laughs> That's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think if you um, if you if you look if you look for people who appear to be living the life that you like to live, and kind of model the cool stuff they're doing, and you know this concept of reverse engineering, you know, funnel hacking. I think they're, they're calling it, aren't they? Now, people yeah. across the um, But that's the key thing, and don't be diverted by people who. Um, are successful but don't resonate with you. you know, so I think the key, the key part of that is find people who are living the life that you want to live or who appear to be and by all means be influenced by them. So, you know, there are some big names out there that I, I pay no attention to because you know, I don't want to be like them at all. I'm thinking of people like Gary Vee. Um, I admire him, undeniably successful, but I don't want to be like him. So I don't follow him. Um, Tony Robbins. Yeah, I am. I'm the same way. Yeah, Tony Robbins. I don't want to be like him. I, I don't ever want to fill a room with um, uh, de devotees with sycophants, you know, and give them an adrenaline rush for a few hours that soon wears off and has no long-term impact on them. You know, I don't want to be that that guy either. So I think you've got to be very careful when you're picking your heroes. To you know, select people who meet your your values, you know, and appear, as I say, to be living the life that you want to live, and then by all means, let them influence you as much as you can. Yeah, I think it's it's really interesting because um, we like I, I learned early on that you have to you have to be specific about who you're picking in different areas of your life too, right? Like the person that you it might be your your hero in business might not be your hero for like your spiritual life or for how you're raising your children or for your relationships yeah, sure. and stuff like that. So, you, you know, um, I always, I always like to look at the results that someone has in a specific area, right? Like how did your kids turn yeah. out? If I'm going to listen to you for parenting advice and, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and what does your business look like from a lifestyle standpoint? If I'm going to listen to you from a business standpoint, right. You know, cause like yeah. I'm on that same token, right? like that, you know, Gary V is a great guy and I like what he's doing and I like his, um, I like everything, a lot of things that he says, but mm -hmm. he's also got a two or 300 person business. He's building a media empire. That's not the type of yeah. business I want. No. Right. Exactly. Um, and and it's not that it's the wrong kind of business. It's just not the business I want. Right. Yeah. Um, so. And it's interesting. Yeah. And like, is it, yes, it's interesting how you, you kind of put together your kind of hero panel from different people in different areas. Um, and mm -hmm. that's just because nobody's exactly like you, are they? you know, Ta yeah. take, taking bits of, of of a number of people is is probably the only way you're going to get anything that resembles you as a, as a person anyway. Yeah. And so, you know, you can yeah. pick and choose the things that you want to learn and listen from. Right. So like 
Frank Kern, for instance, you know, I've, I've seen him at his team. He's got a small team, right? And he does, a, he's got a, you know, does large revenue from a small team um, yeah. and has a lot of freedom because of it um, yeah. that I like, right? So that's, yeah. that's one of the reasons why I like, I pay attention to what he says about how, how and why he runs the business the way he does, right? Because it, it's in alignment with what I want to do with my business. Um, again, that's not to say that that's the only way to do it, right? It's just, it's the way that I like it. So that he's one of the yeah. people that I have put in my, yeah, I, I, I do feel he's one of the good guys. You know, I've never met him, but he comes across as some somebody that would resonate with my values. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So let's bring it home a little bit for our listeners and to talk about some guiding principles, right? So what are the top one or two things that you, you know, principles or actions that you, you implement on a daily basis that have helped you achieve the level of success that you've, you've you know, sort of had so far? So we're, we're thinking... Um, processes here kind of tactical so level either or, processes or, or, or something something that you do on a daily basis like you know some of the things that people have talked about you know meditating or taking notes on a daily basis oh, or right. you know some like something that you're doing on a daily basis that is helping you push the needle forward um you know on a you know on a regular basis something that maybe you wish you had known when you got started yeah right well <clears throat> what, what that question makes me want to talk about i think is the the structure uh, and discipline of a digital calendar. Um, and just come back Deadline. to what I think. Well, 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 kind of, yeah, but, but also the understanding that if I'm going to hook my calendar up for the world to see the blank spaces, if you like, on the calendar scheduler, because mm -hmm. um, just in case anyone isn't using a schedule and is worried about sharing your calendar, the, the calendar scheduler doesn't display your calendar, it just displays the gaps in the calendar where people can book things. Um, if you're going to do that, you're going to live your life by that. You better make sure that everything you want to do on a daily basis is already on your calendar. Otherwise, someone's going to grab that slot. So, you know, family time, meal times, workout, meditation, um, calls with clients, of course, that then come in from, from them fundamentally. But then space to, to build stuff. You know, I have reading and writing slots that I blank out on my calendar. So the discipline of that means that, A, nobody can book anything across it, and, and B, if I'm going to be true to myself, I've got to do that stuff when it's on my calendar. So the discipline and the structure that then drives the process that, that, that builds my business, assuming I've put the right stuff in my calendar in the first place, um, that's just tremendous. you know. And it's the opposite of coming into an office with a kind of empty desk and going right what we're we going to do today then i think yeah just, you've already got it scheduled on the calendar you know what you're doing yeah it's, it's already there now you sure you can cut yourself some slack i mean if it, if it says reading and writing for two hours on a monday morning I, I don't feel like doing either of those things i don't have to you know it's my game it's my rules and i can break the rules if i want um but it's just having it there in the first place motivation stops procrastination at least to, to some extent so for, yeah. for me i think i think i think that that one thing so it's a it's a combination of the mindset isn't it and the the desire to create structure coupled with the technology that the digital calendar allows and, and the schedule well, on them and i think one of the things that forces you to do too if you're going to commit to putting it on your calendar you have to actually think about is this the kind of thing that's actually going to produce revenue is it worth yeah. blocking out time on my calendar for yeah. right so you have to be you have to be a little bit more stringent with what you're doing through with your time because you're yeah. you're actually thinking about it instead of letting instead of letting your business sort of happen to you you're yeah. you're you're happening to your business right you're actually yeah. you're the one who's doing it and driving it which i think is a it's, it's a really important point um yeah. and and it's absolutely true. Like, and I, you know, I do the same thing. We actually have, I have a couple of calendars, right? I have like a family calendar and we have like a travel calendar um, because you know, we travel all the time. Um, so we travel every couple of weeks and I make sure that, uh, you know, on travel days, it actually blocks the day out. Um, so it, it'll show up on the calendar. But like when my wife books something for, you know, that she wants me or the kids or whatever to be at, um, that it blocks out that time on my calendar. I'm including the travel stuff like that. So it's like, yeah, exactly, you know, yeah. it's, it, you know, when I say we live and die by the calendar, it's like, it, it's true. Um, and it's got to be on the calendar in order for, um, for it, it's, it's really interesting. 
the more I lock down my calendar, the more freedom I have in my business, which seems counterintuitive. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I was going to make that point, actually, if it seems like, you know, a rigid, almost kind of military like discipline, it's it's actually the opposite of that, because what what it stops happening, it stops um, random emergencies are suddenly arriving on your calendar because if you're doing something else then you're doing something else you know and yeah, when, yeah. When, when when people say to you uh oh can i have a quick word which you sometimes get in messenger can i pick your brains for a moment the answer is grab a slot on my calendar and we can talk assuming you want to talk to them at all send them a scheduling link and they, they can find some space for themselves but you mm-hmm. don't you know, like I used to do in the old days, you know, if your phone rang on your desk, you'd take the call, you know, you know and, and 15 or 20 minutes later, you realize that you've forgotten what you're doing before the call. <laughs> and, and, and life was way more chaotic at that point. So it isn't yeah, about and then, military discipline. It's about making life easier, isn't it? Yeah, it's about making life easier. And then the other thing that it does too is, um, and I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but when you are not doing things that are on your work schedule, you're doing things that are for yourself or for your family or other things, you are freer in those times, right? You're not thinking about the other stuff. You're not, you're not thinking to yourself, is there something else I could be doing? Or is there something else I should be doing? Because you've already done it. It's already on the calendar. It's like not taking up mental space. Yeah, right. I agree. Uh, and you, you, yeah. you get better at it as well. You know, when I first, first, first started with a digital calendar, it was pretty sparse and, you know, it was just appointments. Um, but, you know, once you, once you learn that if, if you put everything that you want to do on it, including, you know, in office tasks that don't involve anybody else, then um, like you say, you know, when there's a blank space and nobody's booked it, you can just walk out the door and go stand in the sunshine for a bit, you know, and, why, why shouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I do this. We, we, like I said, we travel, right? So we're always in cool places. So, you know, when I got a couple hours free on the calendar, I'll go out and just sit and enjoy or go for a walk or, you know, take the kids to the pool. Um, yeah. And actually sort of the, the reason we're building this kind of stuff is to have some of that time freedom. So mm. use it, right? You the, know the, which time is free. And it's actually free. Yeah. I mean, th- this conversation is teaching me that the calendar is even more important than I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, wonderful, man. Can, can, yeah, can absolutely. I ask you a question? Uh, for, for your, yeah, for your yeah. listeners, this might not mean something, but is that a, a virtual background you got there, or are you in? No, no, that's a uh, that is a a sheet that I've got hanging up in my yeah. RV here. So we'll we can we can we can break the uh, break. I was going to uh, say that there's not much. What you call it? That is a, a uh, average RV, is there? This is this is an RV, uh, like a, a fake office that I make to do my uh, to do the podcast. So it looks all professional wow, and super great. cool. Um, is that Winnie Bago? Uh, this is a Western RV. Um, so Western uh, something Western or something Alpine. Um, anyways, they were a uh, sort of a, a luxury brand, two thousand to two thousand eight or so, and then they got uh, they got crushed in the. Uh, um, in the uh what do you call it the economy downturn here in the in the states and got um went bankrupt so this company no longer exists you can't buy these rvs anymore which is too bad because it's a nice rv um but yeah the uh um, i don't know if you can see on here i've got a a a light um, up to my right here that's uh you can see to my glasses a little bit um that you know lights the face got the background got a nice camera whatever so you know, you can make yeah, a cool little awesome. professional looking studio um, in a small space, um, you know, so nothing, nice. nothing really should stop people Super if they want to get on and start actually exactly doing are you content. In, in, in SoCal at the moment then? Um, so I'm in a little town north of, I say little town, it's about 100, 150,000 people called uh, uh, Minifee, which is right next to the Temecula wine country. And Temecula is sort of world famous for their wines. Um, yeah, right. So, so that's on the way up to San Francisco, isn't it? Um, so we are closer to San Diego. Um, so oh, San Diego. Right, that way around. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's about an eight-hour drive from here to San Francisco. It's about a 55-minute drive to San Diego. So San Francisco is north, San Diego is south. Um, yeah. And uh, we're on our way. We're going to be in San Diego next week, and then we're going to be going up the coast. So we'll be in San Francisco probably in a couple months. Yeah, Highway One, man. P- PCH. Yeah, <laughs>
Yeah, I know my, my brother lives cool. in my brother lives in Torrance in California, so I know the area. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got a uh, one last thing I do on the show every time. This is a simple simple little thing I call the hero challenge. And the hero challenge is basically this. Um, do you have someone in your network that you think has a cool story that is uh, worth sharing? Um, you know, pull back their mask a little bit on the show. Who are they and why do you think they should be on the show? Uh, yeah, I'm going to name Steve Blompier, uh, who lives on Jersey, which is a little island, five miles by one island, and five miles by one mile. It's in the Channel Islands, uh, off, off the coast of the UK. And uh, Steve is a mind fixer. Uh, in fact, he is the mind fixer. That's his title. Uh, he does some amazingly cool things with uh, hypnotherapy and, and mind hacks and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he would be amazing to get on your podcast. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So we'll uh, reach out and connect later about how we can uh, connect and get him on the show. Um, yeah. So last little bit here. Thank you so much for coming on the show. My, um, the last little thing is where can people go if they want to find you, right? So if they want to list your podcast or in your Facebook groups, um, so who, you know, where can they find you? And then other question, who is sort of the ideal person? I know we've been talking a little bit about coaches and therapists, but who are the kind of people that should reach out and sort of look into the things that you're doing? Um, well, it's exactly that. I'm, I've got total clarity on who should be doing it. So uh, coaches and therapists who are looking to find more of their ideal clients more easily without paid advertising. Um, and they can find me on Facebook, as you've alluded to. Um, the group is called Johnny Hex Marketing. So then go facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Johnny Hex Marketing or just search Johnny Hex Marketing on Facebook. You can imagine there's not a lot of us around. Um, there's no Dave Hex Marketing or Sheila Hex Marketing. Uh, it's only Johnny Hex Marketing at the moment. So. Uh, um, yeah, Facebook's kind in the search you can find it that way and, and please just join the group and uh, we'll, we'll hang out and have a good time yeah absolutely thank you so much for uh, coming on the show Johnny it's been a pleasure having you yeah. here uh, sure and uh, so if you are a coach or a therapist and you're looking to grow your um, your client base and you don't want to spend the money on advertising you like the idea of maybe this conversational marketing definitely take um, the, uh, take the time to reach out um, on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash group forward slash Johnny Hates Marketing. Um, so again, thank you so much for coming on, Johnny. I appreciate having you here. Uh, you're more than welcome. It's been a pleasure with you.